Compute the following iterated integral for the function over the given rectangle using the indicated method. And so part A is asking us to evaluate using the order dx dy. So we will keep in mind here that if we're using the order dx dy, that we have the integral on the outside is c to d. The inner integral is a to b of f of x y dx dy. And you can make a love note here to yourself. When you're given a function over an indicated rectangle of this nature, these first values are always going to be your x values by the y values. So plugging in our given information here, we have the integral from 0 to pi by 4 on the outside. On the inside is 1 to 3 of x cosine of 2y dx dy. And so step one here, we want to take our inner integral and evaluate this. So I'm just going to take, I'll remove the inner integral and bring it down here. So we have the inner integral, which is 1, 2, 3 of x cosine of 2y dx. Oop. And since we're holding y fixed here, we could even pull this cosine of 2y to the outside. So this is cosine of 2y times the integral from 1 to 3 of x dx. And we're ready to integrate. So this becomes... Again, cosine of 2y stays as it is on the outside, and it's multiplied by x squared over 2 from 1 to 3. So pulling that 1 half out with the cosine for evaluation, we have cosine of 2y all over 2 multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9, minus 1 squared, which is 1. So we have cosine of 2y all over 2 multiplied by 8, which simplifies to 4. So I have 4 times cosine of 2y. And remember, this is only the inner, the inner integral. We've just evaluated this region here. So plugging this back in, we're now left with the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 4 cosine of 2y dy. And now we're ready to evaluate the outer integral. So this becomes 4, this is just a general antiderivative, 4 multiplied by sine of 2y all over 2. And we're ready now to evaluate from 0 to pi by 4. So this is equal to 2 multiplied by sine of 2 times pi by 4 minus, whoop, minus sine of 0. So you have 2 multiplied by sine of pi over 2. We know sine of 0 goes to 0. We know sine of pi by 2 goes to 1. And so we're left here with a beautiful final answer of 2. So we now want to go ahead and look at performing this same integration, but using the opposite order, dy dx. So in part b, we're asked to evaluate using the order dy dx. So keeping our definition in mind, we know that this will be the integral from a to b, the integral from c to d of our function f of x, y, dy dx. So we can see in this second case here, part b, our inner integral will be y. So plugging in what is given here, our outer bounds are the x bounds, 1 to 3. The inner bounds are the bounds 0 to pi by 4, our y bounds. And our function was x cosine of 2y. Now we have dy dx. So I'm going to take my inner integral here and evaluate this first. So we're going to evaluate the inner integral. So this is the integral from 0 to pi by 4 
I'm going to pull x to the outside here since we're holding it fixed. And we're just integrating cosine of 2y with respect to y. So this leaves us with x multiplied by sine of 2y all over 2. And we're ready to evaluate now from 0 to pi over 4. So we have x by 2 multiplied by sine of 2 times pi by 4, which simplifies to pi by 2, minus sine of 0. And we, of course, know sine of pi by 2 goes to 1. Sine of 0 is 0, leaving us with just x by 2. So don't forget that this is just the inner integral here. We now need to plug this back in to evaluate the outer integral. which is with respect to x. So this is the integral from 1 to 3 of x over 2 dx, which gives us x squared by 4 from 1 to 3. So this is 1 fourth multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9, minus 1 squared, which is 1. So you have 1 fourth multiplied by 8, which again leaves us with that beautiful final answer of 2. So this example is demonstrating to us that no matter which order we use in this case, we should, will get the same answer. So if you're finding two different answers, it's a good indicator that there's an algebra error somewhere.